So I'm probably about two foot high. My mother was like, listen, I'm gonna teach you how to cook. I used to have this like little stool so I could see over the stove. There was no caution about it. It was fun, it was creative. 12, 13, 14 years old. All these gangsters that were in movies were just neighborhood local guys in my neighborhood. That's what growing up in Brooklyn's like, you know, playing stickball in the street, doing petty crimes around the neighborhood, seeing these guys and trying to impress them. I was like one of the first of my friends to cook up cocaine and turn it into crack. Same thing with shooting heroin and finding a vein. I'm talking to my buddy Chris one day, I'm about 17, 18. I see a, a local guy driving this $150,000 automobile. And I'm like, what are they doing? The kid's a moron. How is he earning this kind of money? My friend Chris is like, he works on Wall Street, he's a broker. And I'm like, really? I'm like, that's kind of the hustle? And he's like, yeah, bro, they're making big money. My buddy Chris gets an interview for some broker train. And I was like, bro, let me go with you. So we both go. They start calling guys in for interviews. And it happened to be the firm's like top producer. And he hires me. And my buddy Chris doesn't get the job. <laughs> now I'm working on Wall Street and it's a very um, barbaric society and it's kill or be killed. And I was determined to win at all costs. And the policy was pretty simple. Whatever kind of pills, whatever kind of booze, if you need cocaine to work harder, we'll give you coke. It was just accepted. It was widely accepted. You know, it, it was never questioned. It was just gluttonous. Drink more, do more drugs, that excess for me. One of the first things that I learned, don't we want to make these guys money? It's like, no, we want them to lose. Well, if you make them money, they take their money and they go away. He's like, but if you lose them money, they want to always try to win it back. And the thing about being a broker, you make money on the buyer to sell either way. If you read about pump and dump stocks, it's a house stock. XYZ brokerage will underwrite the company, the brokers sell the crap out of it to their investors, which makes the price go up. And at that point, they dump it. Also, the spread on house stocks could sometimes be very large. Two, three, four, five dollars, and you're selling 100,000 shares. You're making a considerable amount of money. Highly illegal. I never looked at legal and illegal. I looked at how much time could you do? And how much time will you realistically do? I'm making 10, 15,000 a month. Fly down to Miami, do a bunch of coke, eat big fancy meals. The 10,000 I made was gone in a weekend. Then I call up my sister, I'm like, hey, can you help me, please? Should you make more than me? What are you doing? Are you just wasting your, your life? There was Operation Wood Nickel where there was a big roundup, but I wasn't going into the office every day. The guys from my office uh, got taken. These victims were told that their monies would be carefully invested in currency trades, earning them big profits. I get a call from my boss saying, hey Mike, I got a call from the FBI. They were looking for you. There was a warrant out for me, so I had to surrender myself. They fingerprinted me, booked me pictures. Definitely scary. End result was the authorities came back with, don't ever go into the securities industry, ever. Big red flag next to my name. You know, the only thing I thought of was me. I would tell this sad, depressing story to my mother that I knew would get to my sister. And I would let that stew. Then I would, out of the blue, call my sister. Hey, Dawn, how you doing? Just calling because I care. It's just bull Everything was just a lie. You know what it's like to wake up 35 years later and realize everything you've done, every relationship you've had was an absolute lie? I leave Brooklyn in the middle of the night. I'm living in Florida and like, I'm just miserable. I'm working at 
really terrible job. And I'm just driving back and forth to Miami to buy heroin and just living that existence in a, in a one room apartment. I truly had nothing. So I called my buddy and I'm like, dude, let's go to the Pacific Northwest. And he's like, okay. I wanna go to a place where everybody is absolutely miserable. <laughs> the weather was miserable. I knew there was heroin here and I wanted to die. I was determined and I was set out to die. I call my sister basically to say goodbye. And um, my, my sister doesn't answer the phone. It's my niece. She's so happy. She's like, Uncle Michael, Uncle Michael, Uncle Michael. She was four. Yeah. The same age I was. When I had my little stool and I would cook with my mom. Somebody that doesn't judge me, somebody that just loves me for being me, a person, you know, that cooks cheesecake with her and holds her up to the counter so she could take samples and lick the batter from the bowl. And I couldn't do it. I thought of like how selfish. What happens next was uh, a life changer. I go to detox a lot. They kick me out, I go back. I was actually at Salvation Army twice. The first time I went, I went through the program and did it my way. It was just, it was a mess until I got kicked out. I show up after a year long relapse. And yet again, the Salvation Army opens their doors for me. My buddy Darnell, he said, uh, what are you gonna do different this time? I said, well, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray. It's like, nah, I'm gonna get a sponsor. No. I'm like, Darnell, I don't know. What, what am I going to do different? He says, you're going to do everything different. And I got a, a very valuable lesson. Instead of being a facade, being authentic, I learned a lot about God. And I found a lot of inspiration. It opened up my eyes to like a whole different world. So I begged them, put me in the kitchen. Like, no one ever wants to be in the kitchen. I'm like, I would love to be in the kitchen. My job today, I'm both chef and GM. We have uh, the Wok Seattle. You have to try the char shoe. There's also uh, Matt's Fish Basket, unique dishes like uh, the seafood poutine. And then we have the Bubble Tea Shop, all located in the Seattle Center, right underneath the Space Needle. I found something that I really enjoy and that's always working with the newcomer. Over the years, I've employed a lot of guys from the Salvation Army, uh, from the ARC and the ARP. When I was talking about sincerity earlier, psychology of sales and tactics, I get to use those abilities that were God-given for positive, to help a guy, to find that spark that he didn't know. God has been the guiding force in everything I've done. Today, life is incredibly different. I have real friends and real people in my life. People are genuinely happy to see me. People talk about me to their families, man. That's awesome. God doesn't make junk. He doesn't make things that are unusable. Somebody gave me a shot when I didn't think I was worth it. I'm grateful for that. I will always give somebody a shot. If you enjoyed this video, like it and share it. We are always posting content, so don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for helping us share change.